So, so hi guys, and uh, welcome to the Growth Point TV podcast. Um, today, I'm joined with by Tawanda Kurangwa. He's the founder of Kuros Container Zimbabwe. Um, I've just brought him on the podcast to share with us um, his business story as well as his personal growth journey. Um, as usual, um, the first segment we're going to talk more about Kuros Containers as uh, the business, and the second segment we're just going to focus more on Tawanda's personal growth journey, uh, that sort of thing. Okay. So, I mean, just to start it off, Tawanda, um, can you tell us a bit more about Kuros Containers? When did you start Kuros Containers and uh, why did you start Kuros Containers? Okay, um, so the, the story about uh, Kuros Containers is um, uh, I actually got a piece of land, like um, as a present, actually, from my grandmother. So it was about two acres or so. And at, at that time, I was still going through the phase where um, everybody definitely struggles to, I had, I, I actually decided uh, I need to come up with a plan that uh, could actually help me build up this complex. So I had no background funding, nothing mm. from the parents or anything. So I wanted some structures um, to be put up onto this piece of land and then I can start renting them out to different entrepreneurs because at, at that time we had the high- so if, if we just go back you said you got the piece of land and you was uh, you wanted a solution in terms of building um, structures on the site for different entrepreneurs to yeah if you take it from there see. Sure. yeah yeah, so I actually want structures so that I can be able to make some income using okay. this uh, land that I got from my grandma. So because there was no money, there was nothing. So yeah. what I decided to do, um, this, is, this is after I'd seen container structures in different mm. countries. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. at that time, it then hit me. I was like, wow, this is something. And um, it will actually be easier and it will be faster to actually put up. So mm-hmm. I got back home um, and then I got introduced to a friend who was actually in the container business, but then they would use them for transportation across Africa. Okay. So I had to, um, sold out, sold my story to him. And then he was like, I've got a couple of containers you can pay me is you know anytime you do what you have to do mm. so which is very rare you can't just have yeah, someone yeah. just tell you here's a couple of containers yeah. so it, it didn't seem fine. and then um i got containers um i set up my own office and then i was renting out the other office as well mm. so mm. i had so a friend easy. who was also into welding so everybody everybody that i got to uh, mm. do the fabrication to do the tiling I had, I had friends that were in those areas so mm. that's how I got to learn more about it. so I got my friends to do the tiling for me to do the welding for me um, and in that process I was actually learning the industry like both industries like the tiling industry the building industry um, sorry the steel fabricating industry so I was getting into it slowly so before I knew it, I had like about six to 10 containers. And oh, okay. I used, to, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll design them to a certain specification that I would definitely just say, this is, this is what I call standard. This is what I call um, like my, my own, uh, what can I say? Like uh, my top billing kind of thing. Oh, okay, like, yeah. I'll be like, okay, like, this is yeah. crisp. This is mm. right. So I put in air conditioning units because definitely you know how uh, uh, containers are very, very you know a great conductor of heat and as uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like, well. it's like a yeah. Have people come down to my office uh, and they will be so surprised and they'll be like, "This is a very good idea." You know, why don't you? Um, make some offices for the uh, corporate companies that want more office space, you know, car dealers, 
um, they get open space and then they can just put this there as a temporary structure and then you mm. have to move up. So a lot of people would like what I was doing, so they would also encourage me to do all these things. So for starters, I was like, okay, this is 2017 mm. and I'm only three, and I think I've struck gold here. So I was like, yeah. okay, let me let me pursue it. So I started pushing chorus consciousness. Um, got home, uh, downloaded an application, created um, a flyer. You know, started putting it out on social media. Uh, started pushing uh, my content. I didn't have any pictures to put up. So yeah. what I did is I started taking pictures of um, the layout of the complex, and then um, people started, you know, like having a look at it like wow this is big office. like wow this is crazy um getting calls for people wow we want to come through and see your containers people started coming through and the feedback was really great actually it was really great um and then um within a year i would always just get like referrals every day wow. we started getting a little off you know i started being put off a little bit felt like giving up but I was like no I've done a lot of things and I'm not going to give up on this so I started pushing um, containers uh, met uh, a certain gentleman that was my first client Mr. Nyaduro um, he came up to me so he's he's seen a lot of um, container structures mm -hmm. in, in his travels so he gave me my first um, I did a, a 5 by 24 container home. Uh, actually put three containers together, uh, which had a kitchen, dining area, and a living room. And uh, on the top, we stacked up two uh, 20 foot containers, and both of those contain each of those containers um, was a bedroom, uh, 20 foot in a bedroom with a bathroom and a TV area. So when I did when I did the video and posted some construction pictures, a lot of people started like um, tagging, you know, um, uh, hitting me up on my mobile phone. Can you please send this on WhatsApp? Mm. Can you send this? People started sharing and sharing, and first containers just started growing more and more and more didn't think it was just going to happen like that. So now after doing such a big structure and my client was happy, I had a referral and I had something to show mm. that this is what cruise containers can do. Okay. So, so is in this... The, in the whole process of... Yeah, yeah so I was just going to ask, so is this puzzle yeah. and is this the way you... Yeah, I can hear. Can you hear me now? Yeah. The, the piece of land that you got mm -hmm. from your grandma is this the the place, the one on Seke Road? Uh, you are your your current business address at the moment, isn't it? Yes, yes. That's, yeah, that's okay. my current address. Okay. At the moment, so that's where my office is. Yeah, that's where my office is on, and um, I, I still I still have um, I support uh, entrepreneurs as well, so. I've got a lot of entrepreneurs that are there, but then what I do is I don't um, have like two people that are actually doing welding or uh, tiling or furniture making at one place. So what I've done is, um, it's, it's, it's like part of my business plan where I was like, I need to bring in the people that I should work with closer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I explain to them and tell them, this is what I'm into. This is my business. But then at the same time, the complex is also business for me. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. And it makes sense. It's yeah. Complex, it's tenants and okay. entrepreneurs that are actually running their small businesses and also making money. Yeah. 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 It's a very clever business model. Yeah. Yeah. What I do now is, for example, with plumbing, container homes uh, I, I do need plumbers so for me going all the way across town to look for a plumber I actually have a plumber who's actually renting out space 
at my complex. So at the end of the day, the, you know, they don't have problems paying me rentals or anything. So, yeah. <laughs> so I always give them uh, jobs. I work hand in hand with them uh, in every project. So I bring everybody in and uh, with, with Curse Containers, having everybody on board and in one complex, it makes it very easy for me. So at the moment, uh, when we were doing the, the, the double story container home, yeah, okay. it was easy because everyone was in one place. And if it was to if it was to travel, going we'll definitely next day a stage whereby um, it's time for the aluminium guys to put in their windows. I just go back to work, get them, they fit the windows, they're done. Then we move to the next stage. If it's the insulation guys, I've got the guys doing insulation. They come in, you know, and they and and, and we're all in one, we're all under one roof. So it, it made my job really, really easy. But it's not like I planned it, but um, I I was looking for these people that that had these specialities, you know. So that's that's how the, it's like everything just came like together. I, yeah, I didn't definitely. plan any of it. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Only to find out later, like yeah. that's actually like the God smart way of doing business. Yeah, sure. Also, that you create something. Yeah, definitely, because I think that's really yeah. smart. Because, like you mentioned, you you don't come from a steel fabrication background. Um, you manage to get all the trades involved. Those are the build, the yeah. steel fabricators, the plumbers, electric electricians, everyone under one site. That definitely helps you to build uh, a product that you can obviously yes. deliver to the market. Yeah, and the thing is, with hanging, yeah, and and you know. Um, Hang, hanging around such people on yeah. a daily basis and having all these people um, help you build something, you get to understand what steel fabrication is. You get to understand what plumbing is. You get to understand what how how an electrician works. You 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 get to learn each and every um, advantages and disadvantages of every sector that brings out one perfect product. And I, I, I never knew that I could, I could know the different types of paints and, and yeah. colors <laughs> in their names. You know? So it's, it's actually amazing now. Like it's, it's, it's actually, it's actually grow, you know? So yeah. Uh, one thing that I'm actually happy and blessed about is I was really struggling with um, trying to find myself and trying to find something that I can really enjoy and 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 make an income uh, out of before I really get old. You know, so that's yeah, yeah. that's like one of the major um, mind blowing <laughs> things that that young young men and women go through. Because um, I only started this when I was thirty. And I've, I've tried other businesses before and I've given up because of certain circumstances and it, it, it wasn't even just paying enough. So I was like, you know what, let me, let me keep this a go. This could be it. And mm. this is where Curious Containers is now. So I couldn't handle the pressure. So what I did, um, I got two of my best friends to come work with me and my other friend handles the the, the, the IT department, like um, talking about websites, a domain, you know, everything that has to do digital side of, of, of course containers. And my other friend, he's on the financial side. Um, he helps me out with um, uh, payments, overdue payments. Um, all, it's, it's all about numbers, statistics. Yeah. and stuff like that. So That's right. That's right. They, 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 they hungry as I was. So I was like, guys, we, we both hungry. So let's, let's do this. So they really, mm. they really um, enjoy being a part of 
Kuros containers because I had a real talk with him before I actually um, uh, spoke to them about Kuros containers. So I told them, guys, listen, I know I've got my nickname on it. I've got my mm-hmm. name on it. And we're here to make money. So it's got nothing to do with with my name on it. Yeah. It's it's about right. us yeah. making money together. So if you guys want to um, grow and be a part of this, uh, here, here I gave them the platform. And today we're, we're still together and we're pushing course containers as, as much as possible. And ever since they joined me, we've done about uh, four or five jobs for both corporates and uh, NGOs. Okay. So which brings me to, in terms of um, what products you're offering, uh, could you just break down to us the different, uh, the different containers that you're making, whether it's the office, just um, how, many, what ty- how many types of containers are you sort of fabricating uh, and what are the types, basically? You just break down between the office, the student types, and just what you're offering at the moment in terms of containers. Okay, so at the, at the current moment, what we're offering, yeah. we're offering um, container offices. We're okay. offering okay. mobile container kitchens. Um, yeah, we are offering salons, uh, clothing stores, um, clinics. Um, the, the range is just too much. Um, and our what, what we've actually um done is we engage in face-to-face contact with our clients um we we tell them the the different types of containers that we can supply them so for instance with um uh, our our previous client uh they they wanted an office set up because they they had uh increased the number and stuff so they came through, uh, we did a 20-foot shipping container office for them. Mm. And shipping container actually has full installation, aluminum windows, uh, all electricals. It has your modern uh, switches and sockets that include your USB port on them. So you can charge your phones and different gadgets. Mm. And um, when it comes to uh, the, the temperature in the containers, uh, we actually use uh, air conditioning units. That's 22 BTU uh, air conditioning units. And these units, what they do is they help um, with the circulation of, of air, like especially, you know, uh, the containers are very hot when it's when, when there's when sun out there. So yeah. these, these air con <laughs> units regulate the temperature. When it's cold outside, it makes the container a little bit cool. Uh, actually makes it cool. And then if it's uh, cold outside, it just heats up the container okay. inside. So, so the in, insulation that we put in. We I just want to ask you. Uh, so, sorry, Tawanda. First. I just want to ask you quickly. In terms of powering these containers, obviously you've built it. It's got the electric holes and the water. How does it all work? Yeah. Do you connect it to the, is it solar powered? Is it diesel, gener- like a generator? Or how does it all work in terms of I bought one and I want it on my site. How how is it all powered in? Obviously, the water management and all that. Can you just explain to people how that works? I think. All right. So, um, well, well to, to just your question, what we do is uh, we we lay out all the electrical wirings. Yeah. And, and what we do is we have an outlet. This outlet um, is very universal. Um, this outlet allows you to get an electrician or if you want us to supply you one, we can do that. So this outlet actually connects to your generator, connects to your solar system, connects okay. to your existing uh, mm-hmm. electric supplier out in the, with, depending on what country or which area you're in. Okay. And so that you don't have any... Uh, faults or um, any fires uh, or with your electricity, what we do is we install um, 30 amp and 60 amp breakers. 
So what these breakers do is if there's any electrical fault within the container, it actually trips and goes down to zero. So which means you don't have any electricity coming in until you get an electrician and the electrician can sort it out for you. So you can choose whether you use the solar panels with the battery and an inverter, or you can choose your existing electrical supplier, or you can just use your generator directly. Okay. Well, what about the water in terms of water? You say uh, some units, is it, they got sinks and... The, the uh, water pumps. situation. Yes, yeah. The water situation, it, it now varies with the client because if we're okay. going to do... Uh, two bedroom or one bedroom container home with the toilets. We install these pipes behind the wall and then we put the uh, supply outside. Um, so when we when we lift up this container and take it to a property, we actually then get our plumber to actually connect the uh, pipes to the existing uh, water supply and uh, the drainage for the waste and everything else is the existing pipelines. Okay. Yeah. Very, very, very interesting. Really <laughs> insightful business. I mean, I think it's quite exciting. I'm pretty sure a lot of people watching this or who listen to this will be quite uh, interested in what you're currently offering. So in terms of you started in 2016, so how many containers have you built up to date in, if you, if you go back over your work you've done so far? Um, the, Prior from the ones that I've done already, I've, I've, I've messed up a lot of containers, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I've been going through a learning process, actually, like um, learning how to cut them, uh, how to uh, stop and make them stronger after you've mm -hmm. cut them. So there's been... Um, a lot of errors along the way. And this these errors have been happening for the past three years. And I've really, really learned a lot from, from these containers. But um, from the products that I've actually let out at the moment, um, I'm talking about um, five to six good products that I've actually delivered. And okay. um, I've, I've already started fabricating uh 2019 and to date the number every year the number grows a lot of people actually go and um they ask for referrals we give them their addresses and it's it's, it's a good thing that even my clients um actually um open up to uh prospect clients uh, that actually want a job done and they just want to feel what we've done They've been, they've been supportive and they've put in a good word. And that actually shows me that I do have a good product and I still have room for, 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 for more and more improvement because I'm experimenting with even putting um, secular windows, mm -hmm. uh, rectangular windows, you know, all these different type of doors uh different types of flooring the one that i'm working on right now um it, it's 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 out of this world you know so um i'm i'm, I'm impressed with um all all with, with all the containers that i've done so far even from the first one and um it's it's just been an amazing journey like i, I really can't explain it yeah, do definitely. It sounds like you you're really enjoying it. Yeah, it's true. That's that's the important thing. You really that's the. So in terms of, do you also do consultations? I mean, just uh, some people that want to obviously go do their own fabrication. Do you also provide any sort of consultation services that sort of thing? Uh, at at the moment, at the moment, no. But um, I've had a lot of. Um, College students, university students, mm -hmm. um, they, 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 they call me and they have certain projects that they want to push through. So they come in, ask me questions, mm -hmm. and I take them through the yard and um, they, they see the type of work that we go through like on a daily basis. So they have different questions, you know, like um, 
do I have any background to do with engineering or any of that? But I tell them, no, I've actually been learning everything site because yeah. I, can't, I can't be running a business and not, um, and not knowing or learning uh, each and every day about, you know, different sectors that build up Kuros containers. So um, consultations, well, I'll, I'll be happy to to take uh, <laughs> yeah. consultations. Yeah, but I'm I'm very open, and uh, I would I would actually have no problems if people were to actually come on site and um, mm. try and learn a few stuff. Okay, that's true. Yeah, that's really uh, positive what you're doing. Obviously, a lot of students want to know. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of technical colleges, steel fabrication, you know, the trades, the building trades. Yeah, they definitely want to learn how to do this. So, in terms of okay, you've built this container. You you did mention you built a two story container. How do you even start transporting that? How has that process been for you in terms of transporting these containers? Because I take it some of them are quite massive, isn't it? And yeah, it must be a challenge transporting these containers to your customers. <laughs> well, well, actually, um, the, the, the only thing that I don't have at the moment is um, the whole logistics part. But um, what, what, what I've done is I've built a relationship with uh, a logistic company and they handle all my, my crane work, uh, my transportation work, and they've given me some good rates to work with because I use this um, all the time. So when it came to the double story container home, uh, what, what I actually did was I actually um, fabricated the whole uh, unit uh, on site. Nope. And then what we did was we just uh, carried the containers that were all cut out. We had the doors cut out, we had the windows cut out when everything cut out. And so all we did was to just take it on site in the suit. So we needed the crane, we needed the welders so that we just um, weld the parts that we don't want to move. And then after all that is done, the crane leaves and then we start welding all the parts that need to be stuck together. Mm. Uh, this, I, I work hand in hand with, um, Mr. Ino Sarawadziri, he's an engineer. Uh, he's, uh, he's with Osway Steel Fabricators. Steel Fabricators. And um, he's been uh, a part of Kuros Containers for, for a while. And we've managed to build a very, very strong relationship. And we've put everything in black and white so that both parties are happy. So we, we then, with him, we then um, make sure uh, uh, everything is safe. Mm. Um, we don't have any any cracks. We don't have anything tilted on the side. Everything is even and everything is in position according to his paperwork. And then we then weld up. And then after welding and we have our building uh, intact and we, we're satisfied, um, what we then do, we then have... Um, our plum, plumbers come in, then they get to fit in all the plumbing work. Then we get the electrician to come in, lays out all his wirings, and um, he, he lets them hang for a while until the insulation guys come in. And um, the insulation guys come in, they, they put the wires and they cover up the wires, they cover up the plumbing pipes, and then uh, after that, then we have uh, we have the tiler come in and the electrician to come put in his sockets and close up the um, the openings that were left out for him to put his switches and sockets and mm. all his lights. And then we're gonna have the, the 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 builders and the painters come in. They then skim the walls and get them ready for painting. Then we have our painters come in, put in the paint on the ceiling and on the walls. And then we then just clean up the whole place and it's, it's, it's done. Okay. It, it sounds, I'm saying it, but it's a lot of work. Yeah, it is a lot, it's of, a work. lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. 
It is a lot of work and definitely um, it involves quite a, a, a few, a quite a considerable amount of people. So in terms of, um, you did mention, obviously, uh, briefly about you're quite involved with, uh, with two of your friends you mentioned. So how many people are currently involved in Kuru's containers at the moment uh, as partners, as, as staff, and obviously as subcontractors? How many people would you say are currently involved? Um, at, at, at the moment, uh, my company, uh, I have a, a number of people, but most, the majority of them um like i said like one place they they at my complex along 16 second road in Hatfield. so most of them are entrepreneurs as well so what what i've done is i've actually um put pen to paper and uh set up contracts uh so we work hand in hand um with with everybody like from electricians um plumbers builders because we do need the builders because we can't just put the containers yeah. directly onto the ground. Um, so we, we build uh, slabs using bricks and cement uh, concrete. And then um, we place them on, we place the containers on top so that we don't have the minerals on the floor, um, you know, that cause the container to rust and everything. So we, 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 we make sure we take good precaution to protect the containers from rusting. And that's that's the other painting process that we go through. We put different layers of paint and then we put the final paint so that we, we, we make sure that we're giving our clients durability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as a course container, we're, we're working with, them, with, with a lot of people. I say most probably um, workers alone looking about, 60 to 100 workers oh yeah it's quite yeah it's quite a considerable amount of people yeah yes. okay 60 yeah. to 100 in in the in the long run mm. um we're actually going to start um employing uh people to, like on a on a permanent basis so that so that we we can let our numbers grow in in office because they're different at the moment. Uh, it's just the three of us, and so we're we're sharing responsibilities, you know. Mm-hmm. So we 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 we're kind of handling it um, slowly because, like I said before, I used to handle all the pressure on my own, but mm-hmm. then it became uh, bigger and bigger. So I sat down with my best friends, and um, they came in as well so now it's, it's it's getting bigger and bigger as well so we definitely need to yeah it definitely needs yeah more more hands more on isn't it yeah that's good it's a good problem to have isn't it and uh, the, the yeah. joys of expand yeah. yeah so in terms of we're currently in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic how have you found operating in, in the current uh, climate of the COVID-19 how has it impacted your business and operations and obviously uh, safety of yourself and obviously people involved at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, at, at the moment, at the moment, because of the COVID nineteen pandemic, um, we've been working mostly. We've, we've digitalized a lot of uh, meetings. We've um, um, taken advantage of the social media. Mm. Um, we've we've actually taken time to to learn how to respond to people through emails, you know, um, how to write them properly, how to uh, do things a formal way. And in in that sector, um, my friends have, uh, my best friends have worked in, in the formal sector. Uh, mm. Well, they still are. Uh, I, I've, I don't have any experience in the, in the formal sector, because I've never I've never worked for anyone. Um, mm. From day one, uh, straight out of school, I've done my own thing. So mm. with COVID nineteen um, affecting the business industry worldwide, it it really it really didn't didn't hit us that much because um, we we have um, different sites, like I said, like where we've done. Uh, work and we've delivered. Uh, mm. This is this is with in, in different places that 
that like around Harare. So mm. it, it makes it easier for our clients to actually go and visit the sites and see our product. So we still get a good response. Our followers are growing yeah. and we've actually put up a, a YouTube channel, but unfortunately um, we, we don't have, uh, we just put up the videos because we, that we took with our mobile phones. So at the moment we we're actually working on getting some cameras so that we can give uh, our client followers uh, some good picture uh, and and so that they can actually see what uh, us as as young black entrepreneurs and Zimbabweans are doing. Yeah, and definitely. They can get to appreciate appreciate our work more. You know, the, the mixture of colors and everything would be perfect. But um, I, I can't really complain about COVID nineteen at the moment, like uh, disturbing our business or anything. No, we've just um, uh, managed to just you know, re- like what, what can I say? Um, we've we've managed to like go through and find just a certain way to keep us afloat you know, and get people knowing about us again and again and again. So um, I'm, I'm one person who who's definitely in my uh, social media uh, every day, posting thing uh, again and again until it registers because I believe the media, you know, when, when they start seeing things that they feel this is perfect this is good work this this is something that they want to share they will definitely share so mm. i don't give them a rest at all i just keep pushing um i tell people about my business um i i i literally just don't stop <laughs> that's it i, I don't stop because this is my yeah. life now my yeah definitely is- definitely so you, you yeah. you're sort of nicely leading us to to the to the segment i like to talk about which is uh your personal growth development i think we've covered in detail um kuru's container zimbabwe um the foundation and obviously covered the bit of the chronological story how you built that company uh with your your team and your friends as well so in terms of um this segment um just take us back again so that we have an understanding of who tawanda kurango is uh, just tell us about w- w- where were you born, where, where are you from, um, you know, that sort of thing. So we just have a understanding of obviously where you've come from, things you've done in school, things like that. And obviously we can uh, get some lessons from you about what you've learned along the way in terms of your business journey. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, man, I was, I, I, I was born in Zimbabwe. Uh, I was born and raised in Zimbabwe. And um, unfortunately, you know, um, being being the only child, uh, well, because um, of the current situations that my parents were going through, mm. they, they couldn't have another child, you know. So I guess um, uh, as, as I grew older, um, they, they managed to take me to... To, 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 to good schools and um, my dad my dad um, he used to work for dairy board at the time and mm. we had a little apartment uh, in town this is uh, Gallum Court is now they in our offices mm. and my dad will always tell me don't work for anybody you need to be your own boss you know, so it didn't, it didn't make sense to me at all, you know. So um, by the time um, I finished my primary school education, my dad left his formal job and then he started a, a microfinance finance company that I used to work at during holidays. So um, I would help out and then he... From from that, they then closed these bureau to changes back in the day, mm. and uh, he opened up a couple of salons, uh, Gianni hair salons. They were really big in town. Oh, okay, we, yeah, I think yeah, I think I sort of remember from my day because I, I left Zim when I was sixteen, so I do remember a bit. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> 
Sure. So, so yeah, yeah, so um, yeah. unfortunately, that time my mom had passed on, and my mom was a my mom was an entrepreneur as well. Um, she she was a beautician. Um, I got to meet um, a whole lot of uh, movie actors. Uh, oh. I got to meet um, uh, news presenters. You know, different musicians because uh, she. She, she, she was a makeup artist and a fashionista. So I, I got to meet a, a lot of people, especially uh, South African celebrities, uh, big African celebrities as well. So my, my whole process of uh, growing up, my dad always told me, don't work for anybody, do your own thing. Mm. And I was a very good soccer player. Uh, I, I, I trained with Kips United Football Club when I was still in high school. And that was my path, actually. Uh, Footballer, yeah. Well, which high school did you go to? Um, I went to different high schools, but it was... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think Alan Wilson. Oh, okay, yeah. Alan Wilson, yeah. They're a the good football team. Yeah. Alan Wilson. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I, went, I went to school with, uh, with, with a whole lot of people that are, that are doing well, uh, young entrepreneurs like myself, um, there's a lot I, I could name a lot of them <laughs> they, they, they're actually doing well right now in mm. the industry they're actually helping me out as well but um, like I said like for me to get my experience um, just just up to school um, my pops then passed on as well so everything just went crashing down you know like um, uh, I stopped playing soccer you know, got myself involved in, in a couple of stuff, you know. Um, and then that's when reality started kicking in, you know, like not having your parents around. But then um, I had my mom's sisters. They they were there for me, but we were like in different countries. So it was it was it was it was really much of um, of me being alone. But I had to deal with it. So I got to a time where um, I couldn't go back to play soccer anymore, you know, because I was like, this is it. Like, I can't, I can't, I'm getting too old for this, you know. So I started, um, uh, I, I started, a, 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 what, what can I say? Um, uh, you know, you know, seedlings, like. Um, the seedlings. Uh, yes, like plants. Like onion plants. Oh, seedlings, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seedlings. I started. I started doing seedlings in in like 2010 um, on uh, one of our properties, and it was a very good business. Uh, I pushed that for a while, but it wasn't. It was a seasonal thing. So, okay. for which plants were you, the seedlings? For which plants? Uh, seedlings. I'm talking about uh, where 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 you get like cabbage seeds. Uh, oh, seeds. Yeah. Okay. It's, so it's mainly uh, vegetables. And I was just yeah, asking what what type of plant is it? Yeah, vegetables or flowers or yeah. Yeah, you grow them and then you sell them. Okay. You know, you sell them for some money. So mm -hmm. it was very seasonal and it didn't. It really didn't work for me. And then uh, after that, after that, um, I then uh, moved into. I tried. I tried uh, the label business. Uh, Try to do. Um, uh, fashion designing. Uh, I tried modeling as well. <laughs> uh, modeling, fashion designing, and mm. uh, that the the market was uh, just one of those. Like, yeah, you know, it's difficult. Yeah, the Zim market is diff difficult for those. Yeah, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's very, very difficult. Very difficult. Um, and then uh, after that. Uh, I start, I did, I tried uh, my putty making business. I got some machines and that business, that business actually did quite well. It, 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 it did quite well. Um, it was only for a short time though. Uh, and then uh, I managed to buy my first card because of that. Mm. Uh, so al along the way, I then started doing a lot of stuff. I tried selling cement, you know, um, with a couple of friends. I tried uh, opening a clothing store uh, with one of my best friends that I'm actually working with at the moment. And 
uh, because we we would we would actually go and rent out space like one of them Indian buildings and when you start making money you know how it is like mm. uh, you have them increasing your rentals and stuff like that right. yeah. <laughs> worth it I'm, okay, so I'm like nah I'm not gonna do it so uh, me and my friends at that time we went our separate ways you know. Um, we were we were all trying to figure out ourselves like what are we going to do and my friends had um a form, formal jobs and everything and we were we were quiet for a while we'll just talk here and there mm-hmm. and they they had their other businesses running as well like they they have their businesses on the side as well you know mm-hmm. so um their businesses are on the construction side as well. So when when Chorus Containers actually started coming up, mm. that we started we started talking more yeah, and emerging, yeah. Yeah. And then we started getting back together because um mm. they had they had um uh, uh companies that supplied building materials mm. and um they they were actually doing quite well as well. So that that whole break of you trying to find out what you're going to do with your life, uh, mm. where you can end up, because um, with, with with myself, um, I really didn't go far. It's education is mm. is consignment, but because of my willpower to actually uh, learn and you know grasp certain uh, um, industries. Mm. I then became a force to be reckoned with. And, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, and um, I, I sometimes I ask myself, how did I come up with such an idea? But it's because of things that I've gone through, and my dad's voice still rings. Like, you're not gonna work for anybody. You're gonna be your own boss. You have you gonna push your own product. I didn't know what it was going to be. If I did know at that time, I would have started this a long time ago. But mm. Because um, me getting the land and me converting these containers into uh, offices and trying to get money out of them, it then became a blessing in disguise where now I actually make homes for people using containers. And because of me starting with a whole lot of failure and uh, messing up a whole lot of containers that, that I was trying to make as offices for my own, actually helped me learn a lot and hanging around engineers a whole lot of stuff i can even read an, an engineer plan and now i can actually tell you what kind of steel we can be working with because yeah. of the years that i've been hanging around um uh, the, the people with these expertise yeah. and at the same time um, I'm actually um, thinking of actually going back to school at the moment mm-hmm. and uh, learning more about business how to run my company and um, not just only that but also the engineering part the plumbing part the trickle part mm-hmm. every everything that that helps me um, and the company uh, grow. I mean, like every piece of the puzzle, I need to learn about that. But um, and at, at, at the moment, because of me being in all these different businesses and me failing and pushing on and go, moving on to the next, you know, it, it's, it's helped me a lot with uh, containers at the moment and um, I'm not going back <laughs> and, yeah uh, definitely I mean yeah I mean you've just shared what you've just shared with us is really really ins- inspirational I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will be very supportive of your growth journey because uh, definitely yeah. I think in our Zim culture we emphasize a lot on formal education but sometimes the best education can come from actually being in business, trying things out, you know, learning by trial and error. 
And obviously, when once you complement that with a bit of formal education as well, I mean, you'd be a force to reckon with. And obviously now, because you do have the street smarts and now also you're trying to get the book smarts, which is, <laughs> yeah, a good combination. Yeah. You combine the two together, man. It's, it's, yes. it's, it's something else. It's something um, else. It's true, yeah. Yeah, so so even even with my uh, with my people skills, I'm I'm a people person. Um, I think uh, me going through modeling uh, back in the day taught me mm. to to talk to people, taught me how to care myself, uh, yeah. taught me how to dress, um, taught me how to talk to people, uh, and the Shona culture as well as a big contribution. Uh, in my personality, how to respect your elders, how to respect people that are younger than you as well. Because yeah. for people to respect you, you need to respect them back. You know, and I've always told myself to be who I have to be is all up to me. So I I literally self-taught myself a lot of things and as far as I'm concerned, everyone has something to contribute in my life. So whether, whether you're, you're, you come from a different country, we don't speak the same language, whether you're white, you're black, you're black, you, you're brown, you're pink. I, I definitely give you the same respect as I give to my brothers and my, my, my sisters and, and mm. everybody. Cause at the end of the day, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring in, uh, everyone into chorus containers, despite your color, despite your race, despite yeah, where you definitely. come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And th and those things are not important when he, in business. Usually, I think uh, yeah. we're still hang hang up on a lot, a lot of these social social differences that really yeah, get in yeah. the way of business. I think sometimes in our context. Okay, so I just wanted to move you on to this question. What do you think has been your greatest lesson as an entrepreneur? or business owner so far? Um, uh, can, can you say that again? I was just breaking a little bit. Yeah, sure. I'll, the question is, what do you feel is um, your biggest lesson so far as an entrepreneur or as a business owner? What do you feel uh, has been your biggest lesson so far that you, f you, f you think other people should know um, as well as um, should be aware of? I think you um, my, my biggest lesson right now is um, don't don't be scared to learn. You know, um, keep learning, keep learning, keep pushing, uh, never give up. And advertising is key. Mm. Communication is key. Honesty is key. You have to keep pushing, make people understand, even if they give you a cold shoulder, move on to the next person because that person will definitely come back because I've had situations where I've tried to explain to people to invest in my company. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually glad today they haven't even invested in it, you know, because it's, it's grown so much and it's allowed me to see the realness in a lot of people. Mm. And, and what what I what what I've learned about having cruise containers is that um, a lot of people give you the respect if you're doing something. They give you their ear when you're doing something. Um, no one wants to hang with the loser. Um, unfortunately, I've I've, I've had um, friends that were honest with me. Uh, friends that are in business that have told me like straight to my face that listen if you were not uh, you know doing careers containers at the moment I wasn't going to give you a piece of my time and mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that I've learned along the way that I can say a lot but it's it's really difficult I can't like um, a lot of people can can say uh, you have to be disciplined when it comes to money. Mm. You have to be this when it comes to that. But it's it's very, very difficult because when the money starts coming in, yes, you do want to get the, 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 the nice phone. You do want to get mm. 
uh, nice company cars. You you want to get all those things, but it it when you do that, you you can do that, yes, but it only slows down yeah, your, your progress. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, that's it, a fair it point. It slows. You can you can do that, but it's up to you as a business owner to make the right decision. Read a lot of books that 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 that. Um, Talk about you know how to run your company. Get a, I'm not saying read everything, but there's there, there's a couple of things that you can just pick up that you can just put in your day day to day business day to day life, you know, so that you can grow more, you know, mm-hmm. and not fall because at, at this time everything that I do is is just focused on growth, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm being through everything and. There's, there's a lot of things, like I said, I can pinpoint, but it might work for other people. But for me, I think um, communication, advertising, uh, learning how to uh, do your job on time, um, serving your clients and giving them their money's worth, okay. I think take you really far. And... <clears throat> Also, definitely come your way. So that's that's what I've learned in business that you you need to do a quality product. You need to check up on your clients. You literally you just have to be uh, the best. You have to be the best. That's it. If you're going to uh, not deliver in time, communicate. If you're uh, not going to be able to do certain things. Mm. Be honest. This I cannot do. That will yeah. that will save you time, and that will save you putting your business into a whole lot of problems. Mm. And make sure if you can't deliver, make sure you have a backup plan. Like for instance, um, I I have a container supplier, mm. and if my supplier cannot supply me on time, uh, I have to have a plan B and supply my clients because uh, it's not my client's problem that my main supplier does not have containers at the moment. Yeah. If I said I'm having in the next 24 hours, I need to look for that container and I need to deliver it. So like what I'm saying, if you can't uh, deliver, communicate, but the, that has to be the law that you have to okay. tell your client that you can't. Work. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. I think um, I've. Uh, I wanted to ask you, actually, in terms of because uh, you did uh, mention a bit about reading and uh, uh, seeking information, that sort of thing. What 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 sort of resources have you personally found very useful uh, in terms of your business development? Is there any particular books or websites that you've used recently or frequently that you found very useful? for business and entrepreneurship? Yeah, um, what, what, I, what I do mostly is um, um, I've, I've got a couple of uh, books that uh, I, I do get from, from my girlfriend. She, she, se- she sends me a lot of uh, things. She, well, she, she, she's one person who is, who is very entrepreneur-minded. And uh, she is amazing when it comes to entrepreneurship, yeah. And she 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 gives me pages to read. She supports me a lot. She gives me um, websites uh, mm-hmm. and a whole lot of YouTube channels that I can actually learn stuff from. Yeah, and she is. Um, one person that drives me every day. She makes me think the entrepreneur way in a in a in a in a in a big you know bracket, you know. So mm. she she reads a lot and okay. feed of her, you know. So <laughs> she's making you read a lot as well. <laughs> but, um one 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 thing that 
I, I, I like to do is listen to a lot of audio books on, 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 on business and how to handle. But the thing is, I don't listen to it or read the book all out. The, mm. the books set of last books you take out and this just things you want to so like, focus on. Yeah. Bit, like uh, they, they, they have these, um, uh, when, you, when you open the book, they have those, uh, the ones that are numbered out, like uh, how to handle uh, you know, uh, your, your books, your accounts, how to uh, different things. So I just open up to that page and then I read a little bit. I'm like, ah, okay, that's fine. And then I, I try it out, not there and there, but you know, I've, 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 I've added a little bit of knowledge to my mm. business and where I think. And then I take it all the way to everybody that I work with, like, okay, how, how do you, how do you think of this? And, uh, you know, cause it gives you the answers and everything, but then I just like to just, you know, ask my friends and uh, the guys that I work with and see how they respond to it. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's very, very, very informative. I think uh, it's important just to know how some people um, utilize resources and what resources they utilize. I think from the yeah. previous interviews I've done, books are definitely up there in terms of seeking information, YouTube channels, especially for a lot of trades, for building trades, steel fabrication, you name it. You can find yeah. dedicated YouTube channels on, on the yeah. music industry. Uh, even kids or other, other young people uh, in university doing engineering or anything to do with construction, really. You definitely uh, using the internet uh, resources like YouTube definitely very 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 useful. Yeah, yeah. So I think I, I think we we bringing us towards the end of the the podcast in terms of uh, I think we've pretty covered quite a lot in terms of your business journey, uh, your personal growth journey. I mean, it, it, it's been nothing but insightful and inspirational. I think a lot of people will be very 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 inspired by your story, and. Uh, and I just want to say again, thanks for coming on to the podcast and uh, sharing your story. I don't know. Is there anything in particular, any, anything that you wanted people to know um, before we sort of wrap up the podcast, perhaps your social media handles or any other specific initiatives that you think um, the world should know um, before we sort of wrap it up? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, as close as close containers in Zimbabwe, what what we're trying to do at the moment, we have a whole lot of uh, Zimbabweans in the diaspora. Um, they have a large number of uh, family members back home, and we we all know that we all can't, we all cannot build houses or mansions uh, uh, back home. Mm. But what we can do is. Uh, we can actually change all that by introducing container homes. Um, in the first few fields, we've had a whole a majority of people moving from um, close by rural areas into uh, urban areas of Harare, and Harare has become very, very populated. So what I'm introducing to Zimbabwe and Africa as a whole is that we have to do without uh, the, the the stick houses that we left back in the rural areas. We need to change the environment. We need to change the way that setup looks. So what I'm saying is we need to um, use these containers, convert them into the luxury homes, convert them into clinics, convert them into shops, convert them into everything that we have in urban areas and take it to these um, rural settlements that we've escaped from. So what I'm selling now is my product uh, in the form of container homes, in the form of uh, uh, classrooms uh, to, to, to actually build up schools in the form of clinics um, for the rural setup because our medical sector 
at the moment is one of the major things that I've been trying to push. Uh, I've been in and out uh, the Ministry of Health. Um, we have so many people that are still in the rural areas and they stay very far away from medical facilities. And I've introduced uh, container ICU uh, units, um, container pharmacies, container clinics, you know, and even just have uh, just a little small surgery uh, for the elderly that cannot walk anymore, you know, and they can have these mobile stations um, in, 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 in bed areas. And we can actually have um, container, temporary container homes that we can ship out in um, cyclone struck areas immediately. Yeah, definitely, yeah. The life cycle. That's what I've been uh, a home to stay in. And the good part about these containers, these containers are very strong. They, they, they can withstand cyclones. They can withstand bad weather. They can withstand anything. Mm-hmm. And this is something that I'm trying to educate a whole lot of people about. And it's it's green. And containers last longer. Uh, you can pass it on to your grandchildren. Your grandchildren can pass it on to their grandchildren. So it's it's something because already there's been a whole lot of negativity when it comes to containers. Like uh, it, it's too hot. It gets cold. Um, mm. It's like there's a whole lot of myths that are just running through people's mouths. Yeah. And, you know, people buy it because it's just gossip, but they don't look into it. But we're saying as Kuros containers for for more information and uh, if you want tips uh, on how a container is safe and how long it takes to construct, well, for um, a 20-foot container home takes us just seven working days to put up and to install. Mm. It's a okay. two bedroom, about ten days. So everything that I just mentioned in the bracket, like from hospitals to clinics to mortuaries to to to, to, to um, salons, shops, all these save time in construction. We yeah. can put them within a week. Okay. Okay. They're ready, and people are actually working. And you, we, we don't just s- slow down on on production. When we have more work, we just add more people. We actually have a day shift and a night shift, you know. So we make sure that we we are working so that we can actually give you your product in time. And as Kuros containers. We actually have a website that uh, you can actually go on and see most of our products that we've actually done. Uh, you can uh, just yeah. what's the in. what's the website? Because this is the section I was going to ask you if you can just let people know your your contact details, uh, your social media handles, that sort of thing for people to reach you. Um, yeah. My website is uh, www. Kuroscontainers.co.zw. Um, you can also email us on sales at Kuroscontainers.co.zw. Uh, just waiting for Tawanda to reconnect. Uh, then we conclude uh, the interview. So, um, <clears throat> so once again, um, I just want to thank uh, Tawanda Kurangwa for coming on the podcast um uh his story is being nothing nothing but insightful and inspirational and um i'm hoping people that are watching or listening to this podcast will gain a lot of value out of it and as well as get uh, informed about his products and services that he's currently offering um so once again thank you to everyone that's uh, tuned in to watch or listen to this and uh, take care and we'll see you on the next episode.